first, I think, uh, like most of America, um, I was shaken, stunned, horrified uh, by some of those videos um, to watch someone suffocate to death uh, as people walked by, as he pleaded for his life. And to think in that eight minutes and 46 seconds, uh, 400 years of history uh, seemed to converge and people realized um, in a more awakened state, in a shaken state, uh, that we had not uh, met our promises of full citizenship. Um, we had fallen short when it comes to justice. And I am pleased, I think, that this fervor, uh, rather than dying down from everything that you can tell, uh, seems to be growing and including uh, individuals who um, have not participated in the past. Uh, so there's a, a, a growing a majority that want change. Uh, people told me when I arrived in Kentucky that the University of Kentucky was the most positive force for change in the Commonwealth. And I'm going to admit at first, I, I was, I found that a little incredulous. Um, but with every day that I've spent here, I've seen that that's the case. Uh, we are a beacon of hope. And we set a standard of how things should be. Uh, we represent a promise of a better day. And so what we do and how we do it and how quickly we do it, I think sets a model for the Commonwealth. Certainly the events over the last several weeks have, I think, reminded everybody why you should be impatient. Um, uh, I grew up in the Deep South, um, witnessed um, violence, um, bombings, uh, intimidation. I watched a passage of civil rights laws and voting rights acts that were supposed to change things. I did watch state legislatures in the South become more representative of the populations. I saw many federal judgeships uh, filled with African Americans. And so there was encouragement that there would be change. And yet, um, when we peel back, we, we find that it's been halting or uneven, or in some cases, didn't meet the mark. I, I, I do believe that people will have a more enduring commitment. And I think too, you know, we can change our, our laws and our policies, and those are very important. But this involves a change of heart and a change of consciousness. And, and you can only do that within yourself and with others. And in relationship, relationships that maybe you've never had in your life. And in conversations you're going to find offensive in terms that make you uncomfortable. Um, but we've got to commit ourselves to, to confront these. Well, there's nobody who's uh, more self-critical than the University of Kentucky. Uh, I like to say I am the president of um, you know, 30, 40,000 presidents who remind us that we've always got to do better. I am very proud that in the last several years, uh, when you look at public higher education in Kentucky, we've set the standard. Um, we have led 
by far uh, the increases in the numbers of uh, undergraduate uh, degrees awarded to African Americans and underrepresented minorities. Um, we set the standard by far in terms of the number of degrees awarded to low-income Kentuckians. And this inequality um, that exists starting with an education is something where we have a responsibility. But you also find in academia the curiosity, the answer, the questions, well, why haven't our strides been enough? What is it within our systems of justice and social support and tax policies and transfer of wealth? And, you know, why has none of that also moved? How can it move? Um, you can look at studies um, that show when an African-American, for instance, gets a college degree, things are still difficult. The acceleration you may see among others up the sort of a the social uh, and economic class ladder don't move as quickly. But, you know, when you had redlining, when securing a home by your parents was impossible, something that a lot of people enjoy as a benefit, transfer of some wealth, even, you know, the equity that's in a home, that, that wasn't possible. So that extra leg up wasn't there, you know, that many of us could have experienced. And, you know, we all have to uh, recognize that when you look at the workplace or your social interactions, um, your informal and formal networks, you know, many of those, um, can be influenced by the neighborhoods in which you lived. Coming to college gives an opportunity to meet people who are different than you, who had a different circumstance or different color of their skin, nationality, uh, ethnicity. All those stories are rich. I mean, that is the United States of America. Wave after wave of uh, immigrants who, who uh, you know, my grandparents were immigrants. My, my grandmother especially had difficulty speaking English. Um, she lived in Atlanta. Her husband worked hard uh, running a cafe, and we used to go visit them on the weekends. I remember walking in uh, the front room of her house, a little den, living room, and she had the TV, black and white TV, and she had the American flag on top of that TV. She hadn't been in this country uh, then, but 30, 40 years, 20 years after she was in this country, she, she sent her son um, into World War II. He was missing in action at the Battle of the Bulge. I mean, this, this, this love of a new country, um, and I see it with those individuals who are new to Lexington today. But the opportunity for you to engage in conversation and develop a, a level of understanding um, for history uh, uh, through uh, relationships, I think is what higher education can do uniquely. I think they're exciting challenges, first of all, because I think the mood on this campus is a willingness uh, to make a big difference. Um, and I, I see it, for instance, when uh, Lisa Cassis, our Vice President for Research, uh, assembles a group uh, to start a new cluster uh, or an alliance of research, interdisciplinary research from the the incredible number of disciplines we have on this campus, you know, instantaneously, 85 people show up for a, a Zoom meeting. Um, that's a tremendous response. Um, they want uh, a system that uh, equalizes 
a social circumstance, our health circumstance, and, and they want to be a part of. We also start with our people. I think there's a recognition that we all, all of us, have more to learn about this. And I'm encouraged that people want to learn, and I'm encouraged that we're going to have an aggressive program uh, to touch every employee, um, faculty and staff, uh, all our students, uh, in ways that um, raise their knowledge and consciousness uh, about these issues. I think, too, uh, we have to recognize the, the impact of um, space and where we are and where we can congregate and what we see when we walk through this campus. Um, we can make our campus in its physical sense uh, more of a place to learn, to reflect, to interact. And we have some exciting ideas about doing that to deepen that sense of belonging. You know, to me, the opposite of belonging is something that is so damaging, and that's loneliness. And, you know, we watched in this COVID epidemic when people had, uh, you know, lockdown, stay-at-home orders and all. You saw the prescriptions for antidepressants take off. Um, lots of other measures show that <clears throat> uh, people's lack of interaction uh, was an unhealthy experience. We've got to learn how to have those experiences in a safe way in a COVID world. We've got to live in it. Um, but we can't set that opportunity aside to belong, to share a common set of <clears throat> ideals and principles and, and beliefs that may differ, but have some commonality, I think is an opportunity we provide uh, at this university uh, to find our, our deepest sense of humanity. I think we all are recognizing in a greater sense today uh, terms like systemic and systematic racism. If you take it away from this issue, I would say, uh, and looked at quality assurance in healthcare, for instance, uh, the fathers and mothers of this movement uh, used to say, individuals don't make mistakes, systems do. So you can see within healthcare today, new systems from checklists when someone starts surgery um, to uh, protection so that when someone uses a needle, they don't stick themselves. Um, uh, to tests that are um, blind the color and culture and so forth. So you, you started changing the system and I think, and I assume good to start with, I believe we have people of goodwill. Um, I think what we've got to do is turn all those levers within what we do um, to make the system bring out our better angels. So I hope people will be able to look at us and say, you know what? They changed the way they did things. They changed the structure. They changed the system. Um, and it's enduring. I don't expect this is going to happen overnight. To unlearn biases, uh, to uh, realize that some system we had in place may not have been entirely fair. Uh, you know, that, that's a tough recognition. Um, and the most powerful experience on a college campus takes place in that classroom. And I think most faculty uh, will admit guiding a class discussion that center, centers around white privilege or unearned benefits or 
white fragility. Those are hard subjects. You know, many people, their discipline didn't include it in the curriculum. So how can we best help our faculty to use that powerful experience? They can become very tense. I've seen them go entirely the wrong way, but I've also seen them have a transformative effect on the individuals who are there. And uh, so I hope we, we see change is big, but I know they're gonna to have to be made up of an aggregation of very small changes.